I've packed my bags, hopped into an Uber, and I'm currently en route to YVR Vancouver Airport. As many of you know, I'm headed to Japan where I'll be staying for two weeks. It's interesting to learn that quite a few people from Vancouver travel to Japan. I'm guessing that this is likely due to the proximity and the numerous direct flights available from YVR. I've also noticed that besides the Chinese community, there's a significant presence of Japanese and Australian in Vancouver compared to Toronto. Following my two weeks in Japan, I'll be in Korea for another three weeks. For me, this trip is considered relatively short for an Asia trip. The last time I visited Asia, I spent around four to five months and I got the chance to explore various countries including Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Vietnam, and the Philippines. When I return from Korea, I'll have my Nexus interview schedule, which took around a year and a half to actually book. Crazy, right? The backlog from the pandemic is honestly just insane. These days, the Priority Pass lounges are just so small, crowded to the point where you can see people line up outside. I've been kind of annoyed with these overcrowded lounges lately, so Jason and I have been going to more premium lounges at the airport. So far, the Maple Leaf lounges have been great. Their food selection along with the big space and cleanliness is just better. For breakfast, I'm going to grab a bunch of fruits because I heard that they are pretty expensive in Japan. This is my breakfast and this is Jason's breakfast. A black coffee and a glazed donut. Just joking, it's too much food for me. We're actually sharing all these plates. Hello! Hello! And hello! I like this bathroom because it actually has hand lotion. My hands get so dry these days when I wash them. It's probably from all the over sanitizing from the pandemic. This lounge actually has two showers, although I've never actually used the showers at the airport before, but one day I should give it a try. Then there's a second floor to this lounge where the signature suite is located, and this is actually typically reserved for the business class passengers only. Lounges typically change their menu from breakfast to lunch around 11 a.m. And because we're overlapping, we got to try both breakfast and lunch. I got the matcha panna cotta for dessert and beef soup with some crackers and nachos. Jason got chicken Thai curry, a variety of deep fried items, and a chicken taco. Finally, it's time to board. And while Jason got the extra legroom seat by the exit, I ended up with a terrible seat at the back. Look, you can't even see anything because the wing is just blocking the view. Whoa, do you guys see the airflow or the vortex? The airflow is visible because the atmospheric condition like the humidity in the air causes the water particles to show the airflow. I really hate Air Canada food. Like the last time I flew to Japan for a layover, I remember throwing up after eating on Air Canada and that was just so traumatizing. This is how much I ended up actually eating. Like I'm so glad I ate a lot at the lounge. I think I'll stick to water for most of the flight. Since the flight is 10 hours, I pulled my laptop out and played around the Adobe Illustrator. I think Air Canada shrunk their legroom because I don't remember struggling so much to reach for my laptop under the seat. This is the result. Coco with one of his favorite fruit. At least dinner was edible. I actually finished this chicken yakisoba. Looks like we'll be landing at Narita Airport soon. 
I'm sad I can't see Japan from the plane because of the wing. But at least from this angle, I can somehow manage to see a little bit. Oh, how exciting! I'll be landing in the birthplace of my grandmother very soon. It's crowded, it's hot because there's no AC, and it's too hectic right now. We'll be taking the Keisei Sky Access Express to Tokyo. It's essentially a special train that becomes a regular train as it merges with the subway line. You need a special ticket for this train, so Jason went to buy two while I watched our luggage outside. Credit cards are not accepted, so you can only pay in cash. This special train takes 60 to 80 minutes to get to Tokyo. Since the train won't arrive for a while, we decide to line up and buy a Suica card, which can be used for regular subway lines. You can continue to add funds to this red card, but it automatically expires in a month. I told Jason it's a bad idea, but he insisted on having some caffeine in his system. Can you show me your, um, your Starbucks cup? So he got a hot oh, coffee a in this Starbucks. hot weather and somehow said that he's going to manage to carry his own carry-on, his backpack, and his checked bag. In the end, I ended up dragging my own carry-on my own checked bag and his carry-on because he needed to hold his hot coffee. Um, looks like we dozed off longer than planned. We will be taking the subway to dinner to ensure that we won't be late. Our destination is Ginza Station, just one station away from where we're staying. Luckily, we have already loaded our Suica cards and they're ready for use. Even if it's nighttime, it's still quite hot here in Tokyo. I hope the weather gets cooler throughout our stay.
Since our hotel is nearby, we have chosen to walk back while exploring Ginza and allowing our food to digest. Ginza is a lively and upscale neighborhood in Tokyo, celebrated for its top-tier shopping, dining, and entertainment offerings. It's recognized as one of the city's most luxurious and stylish area. The streets of Ginza are beautifully illuminated, creating an enticing ambiance perfect for an evening walk. During our stroll, we made a quick stop at a convenience store to grab some water and snacks. Jason mentioned he preferred more water than what the hotel actually supplies, and as for me, I'm always up for a good snack. Well, that wraps up my first day in Tokyo. Stay tuned for more travel contents in the upcoming weeks. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button and show some love by liking this video. Thank you.